So without further ado, what I'm going to do is introduce Matthew Reagan and Michael Battaglio to do the morning session. So good morning. Good morning, uh, I'm Matthew Reagan. This is Michael Battaglio. We're both graduate students at Mississippi State University. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, do this briefing. All right, that's better. All right, so this morning, uh, as of 6.53, it's 53 here in Birmingham. Um, sunny skies, calm winds. Uh, as far as the conference, look for a warm beginning today, uh, cooling off tomorrow evening as the front comes through and fall officially arrives. So for today, uh, high of 86, low of 58, sunny skies, uh, calm winds to start with, becoming southwest at 5 later on. Um, as far as a national pattern, look for a zonal flow, especially in the southeast, transitioning to more of a, a, a amplified pattern by midweek, um, and then returning to zonal after that. And then we do have our interest in the tropics, which we'll talk about. So here's 850 temps um, from this morning. There is a cold front draped across Ohio, Indiana, Illinois. Um, and that will uh, move south as the uh, short wave comes out of uh, Wyoming and Colorado. Uh, here's the zonal flow I was talking about here, especially in Birmingham, southeast. Um, here's the short wave that will be of interest later on in the week, or tomorrow evening, really. Here's the jet stream. Um, there is this branch associated with the cold front and then this uh, southern branch associated with our short wave. Here's the latest IR. Um, as you can see, you can see the cold front, like I said, draped across Indiana, Ohio, Illinois, and then some clouds with the short wave um, moving across Wyoming, Colorado. Morning, everybody. For tomorrow, it's really interesting to look at, he just showed the, the jet stream that's happening right now. It's really interesting to look at what the jet stream is going to be tomorrow, look how amplified the pattern is across the middle of the country. And it's just amazing how quickly this short wave develops into a, a full-blown trough as it moves across the country, as it crosses over the Rockies. Moving further down in the atmosphere, we're looking at 500 millibars here. This is vorticity. There's going to be make the laser work, there it goes. You can see this pocket of vorticity down at the bottom of this trough, and that's going to be it vecting out across the Twin States region, across Mississippi and Alabama over the next 48 hours or so. And as that comes through, there's going to be a pretty decent shot of some showers and thunderstorms as it moves through. The European as well, I just thought I'd throw this in, is also showing a very similar pattern, uh, but it seems to be not quite as deep, not quite as amplified as maybe the NAM or the GFS. They're both initializing pretty well, we think. So there's pretty good agreement across the models that we're going to have a reasonably good shot of rain and shower activity as Tuesday evening rolls along. Further down in the atmosphere, again, this is 850 millibar temps. This is the NAM for 0Z on Wednesday again. This is Tuesday evening. Not really, oops, not really much warm air advection. Winds are kind of variable all through the southeast. The GFS has things a, a, a bit more organized across the 850 millibar region. There's a lot more uh, warm air advection ahead of this system over, over Florida as opposed to what the NAM is saying. Really not very strong in the NAM, but much stronger with the GFS. Down at the surface, moisture return is kind of going to be the big question with this system as to how much rain we're going to get. This was last night's uh, model run from the NAM. And by the time the, the front comes through tomorrow night, the dew points are really not going to be all that high maybe the upper 50s, maybe lower 60s right along the front 
and it really depends on how much moisture this system gets, how high precipitable water values get that really will dictate how much rainfall we're going to get with this system. It doesn't look like precipitable water is going to get much above one and a half inches or so. So how well this moisture return as warm air advection kicks in is really going to be the driving factor as to how much rain we're going to get. So for Thursday, I just wanted to give you guys a glimpse. From last night, this was the NAM going all the way out to 84 hours. And just look at how wonderful the temperatures are going to be this far south. Those are 30s in case you can't read the graphic. So fall really is going to get here in a hurry later on this week. So if you guys are here until Thursday, I hope you brought a jacket to keep you warm. Right now we want to move on to the tropics and I'll turn that back over to Matt. Uh, this is the uh, latest water vapor image. Um, here's our area of interest and it looks fairly organized. Um, one thing to note on the water vapor is that the gulf is uh, fairly dry. Um, so it does have to um, fight that as it moves uh, north and northeast. Here are the sur sea surface temperatures. Um, they're still uh, very warm in the Gulf. Uh, plenty of warm to um, support a tropical system. And here's a latest shear. Um, right now it's in an area of about 20 knots a shear. Uh, as it moves north it is going to start increase, uh, encountering increasing shear. Um, so if it's going to develop, it needs to get its act together here pretty soon. Um, the National Hurricane Center has given a 60% chance over the next 48 hours. Uh, this was the uh, track intensity um, from last night, this is zero Z early guidance. Um, the GFDL isn't impressed with it and kind of kills it out here in the next 36 hours. The Hurricane Wharf uh, does develop it up into about 45 knots um, and then decreasing as it goes across Florida and moves north. Um, so there is, there is a chance of at least getting a depression out of this and possibly a storm before it makes landfall. Uh, here is the early cycle uh, track guidance uh, from the Zero Z models last night. Um, I mean fairly good agreement of which way it's going to be moving. Um, the GFS ensembles are a little bit farther north here with the main track of the, um, of the, of the other models. Um, so again, fairly good, good agreement as far as probably heading north to Tampa um, here in the next 48 hours and getting picked up by that front and moved quickly to the northeast. Kind of wanted to give you a treat right before we finish. Uh, one of the projects I'm working with Jamie Dyer on and Mississippi State University is 3D visualization of weather model data. And that's what my poster is going to be about if you want to come see me Thursday afternoon. P2.32 if you want to come see my poster about all of this. But I thought I'd give you a quick glimpse before we finish in these last couple of minutes before we run out of time. And so I pulled together some images using some software that Dr. Dyer and I have developed along with a couple of computer scientists at Mississippi State and we use an open source program called Paraview to visualize this. And I thought I'd throw you up a couple of images for you guys to look at and kind of see where we want this to go and hopefully you'll be seeing this on TV someday soon. Hopefully not as rough and rudimentary as this, hopefully a lot more polished but maybe someday in the next 10 years or so. This is divergence which I've written a little algorithm to calculate from U, V, and W winds from model output data. In this particular image, red is divergence and blue is convergence. And the thing I want to show you is, it's, it's hard to see because you can't rotate this image around because it's just a static image, but it's this big blob of red here. These are winds that are diverging at about 0 0.02 per second across the upper atmosphere. And this is about 200 millibars up here. And that's associated with this small jet streak that's going to be coming through over the next couple of days. Further south, I want you to point out these blue values. Those are right along the surface. Those are convergence. And of course, if we all remember Dine's compensation back in Synoptic, where you have surface convergence and upper level divergence, you of course get rising air. So that'll probably contribute to some of the frontal activity that we'll get later on Tuesday night. This is these bright colors are vorticity. The green values of vorticity are negative vorticity and the purple values are positive vorticity. So 
clearly outlined is this trough here across the southeast. Again, this is Tuesday night, and this is going to be pushing out across, so we're going to have very good PVA associated with this particular storm as it pushes out across the southeast. And this last image very quickly is what the jet stream looks like in three dimensions. This is just the magnitude of wind speeds across the upper atmosphere. And, and the that jet stream is not just this slice that goes through 300 millibars or 250 millibars. It is this tube, this blob of air that winds all across the country. And here in yellow are jet stream values, whoops, jet stream values of about, thank you, of about, let's see, it was 45 knots this is. So here is that highly amplified pattern that I showed you in two dimensions earlier. Here's what it looks like in three dimensions. There's this huge amplified pattern, big ridge across the west, kind of a short wave kind of feature over the east. One last thing I didn't get to show is that this level of non-divergence that we get to use all the time to assume values of vorticity across 500 millibars doesn't really exist. To go back really quickly, zero values of divergence are everywhere in between all of these different blobs of convergence and divergence. The LND does not exist. And that's just an assumption we make every single day. So if you guys want to come talk to me about that, I am poster P2.32. Tuesday afternoon, end of advertisement. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham. <laughs>